Okay, I live in uh, Houston and uh, want to start going south to Saltwater to the Galveston, Texas City area to do some fishing. The uh, problem is uh, that's about 75 miles away. And transporting rods is, um, is normally a hassle with a pickup truck. You wind up throwing them in the back or they're leaning on the tailgate or whatever. So what I'm going to make this video of is uh, come up with a rod tote. And what you're looking at here is the butt end of, um, of my rod tote. And the other end is the rod tip end. <clears throat> See, it's a little different. As, uh, the idea is to shove the, the rod in, butt, butt ends, through the holes and then just take them in on the other end through the slots. Uh, I know there's a commercial one out there that's made out of plastic, but uh, I want this one to be able to, to survive riding in uh, 75 miles actually 150 mile turnaround going down to Galveston and back so I want something a little more you know a little more uh, sturdy and uh, I don't think that other one would fit the bill and this one uh, this is uh, this material here is just uh, some uh, uh, what do you call it what the hell do you call it um, Now the material it shows is a masonite, quarter inch, and just for for lightness, uh, it doesn't need to be strong. I mean, the rods are not that heavy. Uh, just want to keep the rods together. Um, of course, going down there, I'm going to have two big rods for surf, and two smaller rods for uh, lures, popping corks, that sort of stuff uh, closer in. <coughs> so. This pattern that's on here may or may not fit whatever reels that you got, and later on I'll, I'll put the reels on here to to kind of show you how they fit. Uh, only two sizes: one's two an inch hole, the other is obviously an inch and a quarter hole. All the other holes are inch and a quarter, and um, and I put kills on it. Put a couple of coats of kills on it. Masonite is not water resistant exactly, but it. Uh, it can get wet, <clears throat> and uh, but it can't sit and soak. But I figure putting a coat of kills on it before I paint it uh, won't hurt. So anyway, that's what I wanted to start with. And uh, you know, if you're going to make this, you don't need for me to show you how to drill a hole or cut a hole out. So it's going to be kind of an abbreviated uh, demonstration. Okay, I promise you I wasn't going to go through a lot of uh, stuff that you probably already done. That's just too good to not show you. Uh, what I'm going to do is to is to connect the uh, these ends via um, kind of a framework of these two by twos. So I'm going to have butt joint to to this here, same way on the bottom. So the way I'm going to join these is to use a pocket hole screws. And so I've already marked this end and the other one for the other end. So I've marked them here so I'll know which end to use. And this is really slick. If you don't have one of these, you uh, you need to get one. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do this on a piece of scrap. <clears throat> so literally, you don't have to measure anything. All you have to do is know which side you're going you're gonna to actually use. Got the three holes here. This drill has a, a collar that goes up to a certain point. You set the collar by laying it down on this thing here. And you get your depth of what size stock you're using and uh, anyway so you have three different places to put it um, so I'm going to select the one that lets, lets me get it a little offset I'm going to offset here and uh, so I'm going to put two so literally all you got to do is clamp it run it in there's one clamp it There's a second one. Alright. So uh, all I've done here is just clamp the board on the end of it to give me something to kind of push against. And um, I want these pocket holes to go against. I want them to be concealed like that. So <clears throat> So they're going to go in there like this. I'm going to do one of these and you can use your imagination on the others. 
Like I said, they, they found a little drop of glue. Makes a, makes a good bit of difference to the overall strength of this joint. Push that against it. Hold that against it. Good to go. Okay. okay, now you can probably get a general idea about what's going on with this. Um, this little offset here is on purpose because if I'm grabbing and carrying, then I don't want to get in the way of uh, any rods that are here. I don't want my fingers in the way of them, so I set that up a little higher on purpose. But that's, that's where we are now. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, I have a marine varnish I'm going to varnish this with and my wife helped me pick out a color <coughs> and I'm going to spray it on there and we'll see what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, I've put a couple of coats on um, of the paint, <coughs> exterior, flat, and then the spar uh, polyurethane on this, just sprayed it. And also, uh, I don't know if you can tell, I went ahead and uh, rounded over this to make get rid of the sharp corners so it'll make it a little easier to handle, um, to hold anyway. So what we're going to do now is, uh, is to line the interior of all of these to, to kind of protect it. They're a little bit rough and these are brand new rods I've got. I don't want to have them all banged up, just um, just just try to do something I can. This is a door and a window gasket. Uh, got it from uh, you know Lowe's Depot and uh, it comes paired up and you can just tear it apart and it's about the right thickness for uh, for lining the interior but this is made to stick on a rather smooth surface. It has a you peel a paper back and it's got a tacky surface there. What I want to do is to use this, since these interior areas are not smooth at all. What I'm going to do is, I've uh, got this, I don't, I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to try it. This is just an adhesive to repair uh, plastic things, and it says it stays flexible. So if I can get it on there to go into the, into the irregular surface of the inside of these areas I want to line, and let it dry till it's tacky, then stick this... Um, stick this stuff on there then uh, hopefully that'll be a good enough liner to uh, to protect the rods okay after uh, paint and uh, putting it all together I use the um, uh, stainless steel screws and it uh, just to keep from uh, having rusty rusty screws after a while and it, it did line it with the uh, with the material it's nice and cushiony and it does seem to be able to stick in there so um, the idea is to uh, load this puppy up with the big boys and the little guys
rod tips. Got a new reel, I haven't I haven't put it on the rod yet, but just for the sake of demonstrating what's going on here. Go ahead and put it in. Looks like I should have put this little one in first. Like so, uh, then what we want to do is, is make a little bungee cord. I haven't tried this yet, so we'll see how it works out. And uh, basically just, just kind of tie them together. Not too tight, but just tie them in there. So there's, there's no hope of them uh, coming loose. And uh, so there we go. This can go on the back of the pickup truck. Just like that. So it should ride okay. And uh, that's my redneck rod carrier. Just like that. That'll work. Uh, one more thing, um, it occurred to me that this would be uh, quite easy to, to get a couple of hangers, just straight hangers. Uh, I don't know if you can see what I've got on my, on my ladders, but uh, just a couple of just straight out hangers and uh, put it on the wall, just hang it on the wall just like it is. Um, probably could hang it ver vertically, vertically in this way. Probably rig up something to hang it that way also. So, anyway, there you go.